Everything seems to be growing exponentially these days. The spread of COVID-19, the number of vaccinations, the value of stocks like Tesla or GameStop, the number of subscribers to movie streaming services, the world population, the compounding interest on credit card debts, the spread of wildfires, videos going viral, or the processing power of computers. We hear about exponential growth in the news and in business presentations, but we don't really pay much attention to them. Instead, we should learn to recognize exponentials, as they offer opportunities when we spot them at the early stage, but they present serious risks when we realize of their presence later, when they are in full development. Paul Saff was a writer and a consulting professor in the School of Engineering at Stanford University. He also chairs the Future Studies and Forecasting Track at Singularity University. He recently gave a clear explanation about the nature of exponentials at a computing event where one of the most talked about topics was the Moore's Law, probably the most popular of the exponentials. Moore's Law states that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years, while the cost of computers goes down by a half. That most famous exponential in all of human history Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is a marvelous phenomena. It's gone broadly into the public consciousness. But therein lies a bit of a problem. People think they understand Moore's Law, when in fact they don't. And in addition, because Moore's Law has become such a big deal, it's cast a shadow over all the other exponentials in our lives. And in fact, exponentials are not strange beasts. It rarely appear. Exponentials are everywhere around us. They absolutely surround us. And because people become so fascinated, so transfixed by Moore's law, they ignore the fact that we're surrounded by exponentials. But there's a whole other class of exponentials in our lives, and that's the exponential challenges, some of which are very old challenges, and others are the consequence of new technological innovations. An obvious exponential challenge is revealed in this chart of global population growth. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to look at this chart and say, gee, this trend will not continue indefinitely. You are here, way off in the upper right corner of this chart, and the question is, over the next 50 years, what challenges will this exponential growth present to us. But there are plenty of other exponential challenges. The one on everybody's mind right now, of course, is the global pandemic, COVID-19, a classic exponential, and a classic exponential in many ways, as I'll come back to in a few moments, because exponential phenomena were explained first as biologic phenomena. In a perfect world, the exponentials about opportunities would offset the exponentials about the challenges, but it's not that easy. According to Saf, in fact, there is a third dimension that evolves only arithmetically. We have two exponentials and one arithmetic phenomenon. The arithmetic phenomena is the rate of cultural change. Culture lag is shorthand for the gap between our understanding of the opportunities presented by positive exponentials and the challenges by negative exponentials. And that lag is turning into a gap, a chasm. The general public barely understands to today's technology. It's indistinguishable from magic, as Arthur C. Clarke once observed. They have the vague sense they're carrying supercomputers in their pockets they hardly know what that means. And even experts have a hard time understanding the implications of this rapid change. One of the risks is that when people realize the presence of an exponential, it will be too late. Exponentials show a pattern that starts slowly, but then increases very rapidly, and this creates the greatest shock. Safo compares it to credit card debts. Users charge more and more frequently, but often fail to realize the total amount of their debt until it is too late, and they can only afford to pay the interest and never get back to the principal. Or, as Ernest Hemingway so eloquently put it, in The Sun Also Rises, Why, sir, how did you become bankrupt? Well, actually in two ways. At first gradually, and then suddenly. 
that sneaky part of the at first gradually lulls people into complacency and then they get caught by the suddenly. That's what's happening with the pandemic. So many people denied the reality of the pandemic because it seemed like such a small doubling until it ceased to be a small doubling and then suddenly they were behind the curve racing to catch up in a complete panic and just like the indebted credit card holder couldn't even keep up with the interest much less reduce the principal. And then there are the phenomena that look like exponential curves but are not exponentials at all. They are instead the exponential phase of something else. And that something else is a logistic curve, the S-curve. What we call exponential curves are just the exponential phase of Pierre-Francois Verhulst's logistics curve, the classic S-curve. And even the exponential growth in the semiconductor industry, if we look at it closely, is created by interlaced S-curves of succeeding technologies. The classic example of the S-curve was published by Raymond Pearl way back in 1925 in the biology of population growth. The logistic curve has a specific point where a sudden change takes place. People tend to call this point the inflection point, but the correct name should be takeoff point. The inflection point is at the midpoint on the logistic curve. Before the inflection point is a period of constant acceleration. After the inflection point, where the growth factor drops below one, that's constant deceleration. And the way I think of this, in fact, is actually these are two separate curves separated by an inflection point. There's the exponential curve, the moment of progressive acceleration, and then on the other side, when the growth factor drops to one, is the logistic element of the curve, progressive deceleration. So keep that in mind. A really important job as members of the semiconductor industry is to help people understand that exponential curves are logistics curves. Today, SAFO sees the signs of an event that will be even more disruptive than the pandemic and will impact Silicon Valley in particular. The second most predicted exponential event I can think of in our future is the great earthquake that will eventually come to California. This slide captures it. The USGS has been saying for years, hang on, get ready, it's going to come. The challenge is that the Richter scale itself is exponential. A magnitude one quake versus a magnitude two quake. Just, it seems like a tiny difference between one and two. But of course, a magnitude two quake is 13 pounds of TNT. And a magnitude three quake is over almost 400 pounds of TNT. But now let's take this a step further to the quake that will eventually hit Silicon Valley. The magnitude two quake is that little teensy tiny dot here on the left. I didn't even put the magnitude one on because it's so small it's not worth it. And the magnitude three is that slightly less teensy tiny dot. A magnitude 8.3 quake, which is what the magnitude was of the 1906 San Francisco quake, to scale would be a sphere 115 feet in radius. That's not diameter, that's radius. It would be the equivalent of over 12 million tons of TNT. And go just two decimal points up on the scale to the Alaska 1964 quake, which fortunately we should never see in Silicon Valley, that was over 35 million tons of TNT. So when everybody goes, wow, that was magnitude six, that was a big deal, you know, I can handle the magnitude seven. It's an exponential scale that we're going to be constantly surprised. The presentation took place before one of the most dramatic wildfires event in California. To his credit as a forecaster, the presentation was titled Chasing Fire. Wildland fires grow exponentially. Way back in 2016, there was a fire in the hills behind Silicon Valley, the Loma Fire. And amazingly, a UPS driver was driving on a road above and in the first few minutes captured a picture of this fire on his phone and put it out over Facebook. And at the same time, a helicopter, not just any helicopter, 
but a California Department of Forestry fire copter from the station up at Lexington Reservoir down the road was flying over the fire just as it started. Amazing. Well, this is how you stop an exponential phenomenon like a wildfire, is you get there early and you attack it quickly. And the fire trucks rolled out of their fire stations within minutes of the alert coming out, and they were racing down the freeway. And of course, they put the fire out by sunset. Except that they didn't. It took until October 8th, over two weeks, to put this fire out. It burned nearly 5,000 acres, burned nearly 30 structures, took almost 400 fire personnel from over 26 agencies. So what happened? We got there early. We responded with full resources. Well, it turns out that fire grows exponentially. Fire trucks only accelerate arithmetically. So as those fire trucks were accelerating down Highway 15 to the fire, they weren't even like the Red Queen and Alice in Wonderland who ran faster and faster to stay in one place. They were accelerating faster and faster, and even as they accelerated, they were falling further behind. Catching the fire at the moment it began was not good enough. So how do you fight a pandemic? How do you fight negative exponentials? It's just like a wildfire. If you catch it when it starts, starve it of fuel, limit the growth phase, come in from the sides, catch the slops that come over your fire line, above all, stop the momentum, and get there early. Except as we saw, getting there early was not good enough in the Loma fire, and getting there early on our exponential challenges ahead will not be enough either. We need to do more than that. We need to anticipate the fires before they begin, be there before they start, be ready to put them out. That means responding at the level of policy, supporting government agencies to be more effective, helping citizens to be educated about exponentials and their implications. The lesson is, as we look out to the next 50 years, our job is to think about the consequences as much as the opportunities and being experts in exponential technology, the burden is on you to help the public, to help policymakers, to help global society at large anticipate, educate, and above all, think how we can change that slowest part of the exponential equation, the slow shifting of our culture in order to create a world where our institutions and our societies respond early and effectively to exponential change.